Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're going to explore the question what is the best party for War Tales, best party composition. And this uh, video will have a bit of a different format. I'll start with the basics in the first, say, five minutes, then we're going to move to advanced tips and then pro tips plus some uh, gameplay footage. The guide shouldn't be longer than uh, 10 to 15 minutes, information packed, dense, no repetition, no bullshit, as all of the other guides as well. So let's jump into the question of what's the best party for War Tales. A surprisingly easy question has a quite difficult answer. Uh, the short version, if you want to know what it is, there is no such thing as a best party. It depends on your playstyle. However, there are definitely a couple of indicators of how to deal uh, with a party more efficiently. So for starters, you need to understand that your party size determines also the size of enemies that you're going to fight. Every single companion that you do have counts for one, small animals for 0 0.5, medium animals for one, large animals such as bears for 1.5. The number that uh, the sum of all of that uh, will uh, result into is rounded up. So in this case, we do have six people, one bear, so that's 7.5. The number will be eight. That's the baseline number of enemies that you're going to fight. Uh, the number of enemies can go up to 1.5 of that. So eight to 12 would be the range of uh, enemies that you're going to fight. The reason why I'm saying this is you can add more and more people to your party, but that also means that more and more enemies will show up. Of course, in large scale fights, AOE abilities will uh, start to shine and become better and better. All of a sudden you get crazy numbers on your penetrating arrows, halberdiers, um, suppressing fires, and all of the other nice AOE skills. But in, in a core mechanic, it also means that each individual is less impactful and that the combats take longer. So, as a basic, if you're starting out the game and you're wondering what, what's the best party, uh, the typical consensus of everything that I've read is start with 6 to 10 people in your uh, party. The reason why I'm uh, saying this is uh, 6 people would be one of every class, 10 people would be one for every progression. So if you find your sweet spot between that, typically combats are A, fast, B, every single uh, character will have a decent amount of combat participation and you will have the bare necessities uh, covered. I will show you today an example of a party of six that I've uh, prepared just exemplarily. These are freshly hired mercenaries that I'm currently leveling up with basic gear, but that should illustrate uh, the party itself uber gear and endgame gear doesn't mean that your party composition is good. So the best party in the game, in my perspective, is a small strike force of a mercenary group. I like to go with six to eight uh, people and uh, once the basics are covered you can add an additional one or two mercenaries to fill certain niche roles. So let's talk about general roles that you will find. Uh, I personally uh, look at it, uh, look at the game and uh, divide it into three to four distinct roles. Role number one is tank, i.e. frontliner that is primarily focused on generating Valor uh, and soaking up damage. The two best characters that can do that are the swordsman uh, fighter in that um, in, in that regard. Look at uh, the build guide that I did for details on the build and the brute destroyer uh, that uh, equally has a build guide. I'll link both of them down below. Both of these characters are incredibly good tanks my personal approach to the game is I tend to have about a third um, of the characters in the party being uh, tanks. If you go down to a party of four, you want to have one. A party of six, you want to have two. If you reach kind of the level of nine, you might want to have uh, three tanks. Uh, three tanks is a really good sweet spot because you can build a triangle uh, where in a combat situation you have one tank on the top, one bottom right, one bottom left, and enemies typically tend to flock towards those tanks so you can't really be uh, mm, uh, struck in your uh, in your backline. Second uh, role that I tend to, uh, to like to see in 
um, in groups is melee damage or melee AOE damage. In my perspective, no one uh, does that better than the Executioner, uh, which is the Warrior build. I go through that in my build guide uh, around the Warrior. Uh, very, very solid AOE damage in, uh, in the front line. It is a Valor negative build, so it spends more Valor than it generates, but in return it will kill a lot of uh, the enemies. I have a second um, build that uh, focuses on uh, that as well. In this case, it's our Spearman Halberdier, who does exactly uh, the same, who fills exactly the same niche with a slight uh, uh, difference. It has additional uh, responsibilities on the battlefield and is way more Valor neutral and positive. So both of uh, these characters in the group would be um, melee AOE deep, uh, DPS. Um, which then brings us uh, to the third uh, group, uh, which is generally single target uh, DPS, skirmishers or ranged uh, DPS. I do have two of them in here. I'm running a ranger uh, with an assassin uh, uh, build. Again, build guide uh, down below, um, which focuses specifically on backline access and killing uh, low armor targets. And we do have a hunter uh, archer spec that does the exact uh, same uh, thing with uh, sniping and focus on backline access. Now, um, those were three out of four uh, roles. The fourth role I would say is support and support typically uh, will be on the shoulders of multiple characters. Uh, in this case, the support is on the shoulders of the spearman and the archer. Support, I would um, uh, summarize in that any form of interaction with either the battlefield or with a group that either buffs your group, debuffs the enemy or uh, changes their battlefield position. In this case, uh, the spearmen uh, uh, can do that with Halliburdier, uh, shifting enemies back, but also with a couple of uh, its additional uh, skills such as Team Spirit for uh, Brutality and uh, um, and repost fury that he would uh, give to adjacent allies. The archer can do that with a recoil shot where they are trying to push enemies away. So that's a lot of theory. We're going to see some of it in action in just a minute. Uh, let's talk about another aspect of uh, creation of the party, uh, which is generally what the different supporting skills should look like. If you are running a party of six, uh, then you need to think about what skills to, uh, to bring to the table. There are 10 professions uh, that you can choose from if you only have uh, six. Um, my suggestion would be to go with the following six. You want to have one cook uh, for the constitution, but also for um, obvious reasons uh, to, uh, to cook. I would take one of uh, the um, frontliners uh, to be that. You want to have one blacksmith, which is a pure strength uh, based uh, build. I would uh, let the spearmen uh, do that. They can also be good in critting, but they, um, but you you really want to have also high strengths on uh, them. Uh, blacksmiths are important to keep your uh, equipment up to date throughout the, uh, the game, so I highly value them. You would want to have um, a tinkerer. Um, I personally would suggest your warrior executioner to go into uh, that as it gives um, solid uh, critical hit chance and critical hit damage. And as a frontline DPS, he can use that. and. There is unfortunately no uh, none of the traditions that give critical strike and uh, strength at the same time. So uh, pure crit um, uh, crit uh, would go a long way for the warrior. You want to have one minor. Uh, it is the only gathering skill that I would uh, recommend uh, to take. It's a combination of constitution and strength. I would let your second tank take that. The reason why you want a uh, minor is you want to make sure that you get the rare materials um, that are needed for higher level blacksmith. Thing. So Brute would go into Mining. Uh, the Ranger then could either go into Thievery or Alchemy. Both of them give Dexterity 
um, so it's uh, that is fine thievery itself increases critical um, hit chance as well so typically i let my ranger be the thief and my archer be the alchemist but you can do it either uh, either way it really doesn't matter so with those six skills what you are missing is you will not have a woodcutter you will need to collect wood or uh, capture um, a creeper or anyone else that can be a woodcutter to fulfill your wood needs uh, later with upgraded campfire wood is automatically produced so you don't need to think about it bard in this uh, particular um, instance is not needed it's really not that important scholar is something that actually could work very well uh, i would uh, put an easy character class that uh, that can uh, switch out of their profession keep in mind the moment that you switch out your current xp is going to be reset so you might want to either do that with a thief or you might either want to do that um, with a blacksmith where you do have very clear cut points um, and don't need to uh, use it as frequently you're um, stepping out of it go into scholar for the mines try to get to that next level of scholar and then uh, skill uh, skill back a scholar master is great but not needed in order to um, finish the, the game uh, you need however to be good at scholar in order to get the legendary weapons you don't need angler uh, so you're missing out on that but that is fine and that's really um, these are really the uh, professions that you would be missing out on the other six are fine of course if you build a party that is 10 or higher um, you will have all of the professions so that ends the basic section two or three minutes advanced tips and then we're seeing some gameplay all right advanced gameplay mechanics now that you do have your base party of six what would i add if i'd be in your shoes I personally, if I wanted to go with uh, more like eight characters, would add another ranger. Rangers are incredibly versatile, so having a second one of uh, them definitely would make sense. And I would add another archer. Uh, that nets you with uh, two tanks, um, two uh, frontline AOE that can also be off tanks and four skirmishers, which is a very powerful party for the majority of the playthroughs. I would, um, if you strictly try to optimize, st uh, stay away from animal companions with one exception, and we'll come to that in the second tip. Um, if you further want to optimize your party, try to go for bears. Uh, they are currently absolutely overpowered. In particular, you can try to uh, get white uh, bears they are available in the Drombach uh, regions. Uh, they are the only bears that attack twice and have a built-in rage mechanic. Um, you can go there, use poison or fire or whatever else is uh, potential uh, hit point uh, based damage. And the moment that you got them below 50%, there's a good chance that you can capture them. Mind you, animals can uh, be captured up to level four, uh, 14. This is in uh, region locked. Uh, of course an adaptive it would look a bit different but in region locked you can essentially from relatively early in the game get you a level 14 bear with 3600 hit points that is more or less soloing uh, the entirety of uh, the game i wouldn't uh, recommend uh, going uh, that route but it is a possibility tip number three on advanced tips um, wrongdoers and other um, npcs um, keep their buffs i think that uh, will be patched out but um, use it to your heart's content as long as you want wrongdoers do have a 30 percent uh, critical um, hit chance buff uh, that apply to everybody in the group it is typically meant as a buff for them you can however capture wrongdoers and uh, still uh, enjoy the buff on your entire group whether or not that is worth one slot for you depends entirely on your play style uh, typically wrongdoers are not uh, very combat efficient by themselves but having a 30 percent crit chance buff might make a difference uh, for you specifically if you're running larger groups there is a bonus tip wrongdoers um, that you will find in um, in reinforcement waves such as when you're trying to uh, root out a bandit nest uh, sometimes do have full skill trees so if you need to inspect every single one of uh, them if they do have a full skill tree you essentially get a full-fledged companion with a 30 percent crit buff which is enormous 
uh, fourth tip and then uh, that's uh, the second last one uh, in the Drombok area, uh, the Inquisition um, has a similar format. Um, they do have, uh, just like wrongdoers, uh, the same buffs. You can um, go for reinforcements. The reinforcements typically have even increased stats, much higher than normal characters. So if you want to go to the extent of having a fully, fully optimized party, uh, they do have passive um, uh, stat, uh, stat buffs for everyone and quite enormous basic stats. Plus, some of them do have full uh, skill trees. I think it's a mistake at the moment, but one that um, can lead to incredibly strong companions as is. Fifth and final tip for the optimal party. Again, I think a glitch at the moment. You can capture up to level 14 um, Inquisitors, Wrongdoers and, uh, and NPCs. Uh, once uh, they are trusted and once you uh, they offer to join you, you effectively have a level 14 companion. If they can carry a weapon, uh, you can go to the Brotherhood, uh, smith and upgrade your uh, weapons uh, not only to level 12 but to level 14. And since level 12 is the maximum uh, level, all of your companions now can enjoy uh, two level higher weapons. All of these uh, tips are with a big fat uh, side remark. You don't need to go to that level of detail and optimization in order to have the best party. We're 15 minutes in. I'll skip the gameplay for a different video. I hope that was helpful for you to repeat the core messages, one of each uh, class. Uh, if I was to put an additional one in, it would be Ranger and Archer. We're going with the Swordsman and the Brute Tank, Warrior and Spearman, AoE damage uh, in the front line, Ranger and Archer uh, Assassination, and Spearman and Archer um, as support slash battlefield control. We've gone through all of the professions. Uh, I've given you some extra tips. Now it's really up to you to rock the game. Let me know if that was helpful and uh, are you agreeing uh, with what you have heard. Thank you and see you soon. Bye bye.